Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC, WRPT, and Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Chris Eilers, Executive Director of the St. Louis River Alliance. Chris has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us, and thank you, Chris, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So the river looms really large in American history. If you take a look at the rivers, they were our first highways, and even before that, they were sources of nourishment, they were sources of agricultural bounty. Talk about the river in, in this area of the country and why it is so important. Being the second largest tributary to um, Lake Superior is, you know, the largest, actually the largest um, tributary, U.S. tributary to Lake Superior is one of um, a huge importance uh, for, our, for our whole area here. Um, but Lake Superior has always gotten all of the glory and all of the praise, but we have to look at the rivers that feed the, that feed the lake um, because the lake is only as clean as the rivers are. How this is all bound together is so important. The watersheds feed the rivers and the lake. The watersheds include uh, uh, agricultural uh, areas, so you have runoff from um, uh, agriculture. Uh, they include the suburban and urban areas, so they're runoffs from the cities, and all that ends up in the Great Lakes. All that ends up in our drinking water, all that ends up in, in the food that we eat, and, and either directly or indirectly it impacts our lives. So it's very important to consider what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and how that is going to come back and impact ourselves. Correct. And, you know, if, when you look at the history of the river, you know, we, it started off as pristine, as, as all rivers and all water has. Um, over time and development, um, you know, the, the people really um, forgot about the river being a source of life. And so that's how some of the pollution happened um, back in the, you know, as far back as the 1900s. And then especially during, like, the industrial boom um, in, the, in the 60s and 70s, things started getting really bad in, in our estuary here um, because of industrialization. And, you know, what the industry was doing was not illegal at the time. You know, it was just the thing to do to dump, to dump waste and pollution into the waterways. And so um, the history is, is that some laws were changed because of the, the dire need of, like, people finally all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but <laughs> people recognized that what we were doing to the rivers was not okay. Um, there was so much pollution and even rivers were catching on fire. And so um, the Clean Water Act was passed and those were some of the major things that have happened in our estuary is after the Clean Water Act was passed um, and later on WLSSD came online and then that helped remove a ton of mercury out of the water. WLSD, could you? Western Lake Superior Sanitary District. Okay. Uh, was in instrumental and also um, in Superior, the, the sanitary district in Superior was instrumental in uh, removing mercury from the water and um, all of these things sort of gelled together to um, create the means by which we were able to then start cleaning up the river. We had to stop it first and then to start to start changing our practices and so the St. Louis River Alliance has been a part of that process since, since um, after the Clean Water Act was passed and they, um, they started the area of concern process, which actually went around the Great Lakes and they, they, uh, they designated 43 different areas around the Great Lakes due, because of the pollution that needed to be cleaned up. And so the St. Louis River Alliance was born out of that process with the EPA. How do you create that dialogue of people who have different interests, who would like to uh, continue in a way that other people think are harmful. How do you create that connection so that we don't end up with more heat than light in that process? We're trying to help people reconnect to the river and to the water because the reason why we can pollute something is because we've lost our connection. And when you don't understand or you take it for granted might be a better word, when you take it for granted, um, we always take it, it, things for granted until it's too late. A lot of times it's human nature. What we really are trying to focus on is how do we connect people to the river? And that has been, um, historically, it's been a place that we all gather around, right? So um, it's not unusual for our events to have people from all walks of life, from all different professions, backgrounds, and 
um, and needs and wants to, to come together over the river. I think most people agree that a cleaner river is better for our health, it's better for our communities. Um, in Duluth here and in Superior, we have seen, um, I've been here to witness the change over to where the river was so polluted that um, you couldn't even go in it. And there's all kinds of stories about people who grew up on the river who were scolded as children for going in the river and um, they just weren't allowed to go in the river, a lot of them. And so now we're seeing this, the cleaner water and we're seeing the impacts of that and how it's changed our communities and how we're, we've gone from devastation and degradation to, um, to restoration and resilience and, and sort of a, um, a renaissance of things happening around the river. So really the answer is on a primal, on a primal level, we are all made to understand that we are part water and that we need the water. And so get people down to the water so they fall in love with it. Once you have agreement that things need to get better, what type of action can take place? Well, what's happened here is um, when the EPA was created and the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative was passed, um, funds became available then. I mean, it's all about prioritization. Right. Funds became available to actually start doing the remediation. And um, we've created different means throughout the last couple of decades um, to help get this work done. So, so what does that remediation what does that consist mean? of? So it, it consisted of, I, I mean, I'll just touch on a little bit because it's been a really long process, mm -hmm. but the St. Louis River Citizens Action Committee was the first group of um, where the St. Louis River Alliance came from. Right. Was the, um, the EPA required a citizen's input into this process of an area of concern. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole bunch of scientists and citizens and agencies that came together to talk about what needed to be done. So they created a blueprint of what needed to happen to, um, to delist this as an area of concern. And what so did that blueprint it, consist of? It came to habitat restoration, okay. um, and they all have to do with what the, what the funds will provide for is habitat restoration and actual remediation of contaminated sediments. And those things um, were all determined by a huge group of of individuals and so the funds are available for things that were degraded by historical pollution. It doesn't address, the area of concern does not address things that are happening right this minute. Right. So what's really important here is that when you have a contaminated area, we're talking about real dredging, we're talking yes. about removal of materials. Correct. So there is, there is poison that is that is lying under the surface. That actually needs to be removed first. Now the habitat restoration, which which comes subsequently, is also important because nature can restore itself if it does not have to contend with poisons. Correct. So they they have all happened. They're not happening linearly, but um, and so and our organization has actually just provided the citizens' input into the process to help guide that. Um, we also help get people to the table. And we also have some of our own habitat projects ourselves. And so our piece that we do is to try to get citizen involvement and citizens awareness of these things. And so we do things like plant wild rice. Um, we mm -hmm. get people out, volunteers and members out to help plant wild rice. And we do those things through like the Wisconsin DNR, through the Minnesota DNR, through um, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency is actually working on remediation. And one of the, the biggest things that needed to happen was, like you said, was the remediation and um, the remediation of the contaminated sediments. And so those spots were determined by the agencies and there was about, there was 10 different sites that needed to be remediated that are being worked on right now, but they didn't have the funding to do it. And so the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative had, um, had a match for us to, to get or for the agencies to um, to get to do the remediation work, but they needed to get a state match for that. So the St. Louis River Alliance was asked to take the lead on getting a bonding bill passed. And that was kind of a major accomplishment for our organization. And it actually, at the time, our organization was sort of dwindling a little bit and um, not quite sure what, what we should be working on. And um, we didn't have a large membership at the time. and. This project was a huge boon for it helped, everybody. It helped to re-energize. It did, it re-energized, and the community truly wants to get behind 
these kinds of things and they see how important it is. And so we worked on doing a huge um, campaign to make people aware of what was happening because we hired, uh, basically we hired a lobbyist mm -hmm. to work with the um, legislature and which is, you know, this bonding bill is a, and the river money that was needed was actually very bipartisan. And so um, we created a giant coalition of support. Our organization led this giant coalition of support. We raised enough money to pay for the lobbyist. Um, we had a huge support. The governor of Dayton was included in, in his um, water quality package. It took two years to pass it, but during that time, we re-energized the whole community because they wanted to be a part of this. And um, people are very, uh, in Duluth and Superior, are very astute and they're, they're very interested in, um, they pay attention to these things and they want to know where their money is going. So we actually passed the bonding bill in 2017 and it was for $25.4 million. And that triggered a $47.2 million um, federal funds. And so this is a $73 million project that's been happening out in the river and it's the largest part of the area of concern remedial action plan. We have a vision. We're not going to continually fight or resist other organizations do that and there's a place for everybody to do that work. Um, I think that my role in this organization and our board's or role in this organization is to help create a vision or help people remind people of what that vision and is. And create a movement. And, and create a movement which is based on what we want to see in the world. Chris Eilers, thank you so much for explaining the work of, of the St. Louis River Alliance and also how important the river is to the character of Duluth and this region. It is part of the city. It is a treasured part. Thank you so much thank you. for your leadership and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.